Well, welcome to Christ and Culture. This is Pastor Jeff Short, your Bible teacher and cultural commentator, uh, trying to apply the Bible in a consistent way to our Christian lives and how to think and how to feel and how to behave in this secularized, godless world. And today we're going to be looking again uh, further at Dallas Jenkins, the creator of the Chosen TV series that's out on the fourth season right now. And while I have not seen The Chosen, I haven't uh, had the opportunity to watch any of The Chosen. I've heard some good things about it as far as the Gospels and depicting Jesus. I've heard a few criticisms of it, that it takes a lot of creative license with the script. It kind of fills in the blanks that the Bible doesn't talk about, which is a little bit of a of a dangerous thing to do. But of course, we've been used to that before because of movies like The Ten Commandments, Cecil B. DeVille, he filled in some blanks. He was creative and took artistic liberties as well. So uh, there is some room for forgiveness for departing from the Bible strictly, but I have not seen the series uh, the Chosen, but I have heard things that the creator, David uh, or Dallas uh, Jenkins, has said. So today we're going to be looking at a, an analysis of Dallas Jenkins and what he said by a creator called K-Dub True. And I'm not familiar with this content creator, but he has a very good analysis of the situation. So let's jump in. I want to encourage people like this K-Dub True Christian brother. He was right on in his breaking down what the problem is with Dallas Jenkins and his relationship with the Mormon church and Mormons specifically. So let's get into the presentation. I'll stop the video at certain places. We'll talk about it. But here is the K-Dub True, his podcast, All Things theology and let's see what see what he has to say it's theology we chop it up properly without an apology gotta give doxology to god hollow because this is how we do it at all things theology yo grace and peace guys welcome back to another episode of all things theology where i'm your host k-dub and today i want to talk about the show the chosen but before we get into that, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not, and as always, click the notification bell so you'll be aware when I drop new content. Now, I want to talk about the show The Chosen, and more specifically, the director of that show, Dallas Jenkins, where he said some interesting things about Mormonism and Christianity. So I have a video I want to play. Let's get right into it. Funny about uh, the LDS folks is you guys seem to be even though you're the most controversial, you seem to be the least confrontational. Um, it's just like, hey, we're all, we all love Jesus. Let's just, uh, I just want to let you know we love the show. And when people start going, hey, you're a Mormon, you're going to hell. Uh, you're just like, hey, whatever. It's like, you just it kind of seems to roll off your back. Maybe. Okay, so uh, the podcast host here that is going to comment later on, I want to jump in before he gets the chance to comment. And I just want to say that this kind of loose and flippant casual, nonchalant, sort of lackadaisical understanding of theology is troublesome. Uh, Dallas Jenkins is talking about a false uh, cult, religious cult, the Mormons. Anyone who studied theology of religion, anyone who studied Christianity, and then the heretical, apostate, false uh, cults, have have come to grips with the idea that this is a terrible, awful, damnable heresy that the false prophet Joseph Smith has brought upon the world. And Dallas Jenkins is laughing and making fun of the fact that, that people tell them they're going to hell, and he's just kind of like, ah, you know, you guys uh, handle all that like water off a duck's back. You have a great attitude about it. No, this is serious. I mean, he's making triflings of a very important thing. The, the cult of Mormonism is leading souls to eternal damnation, and he's joking about it. This is really a problem. This loose and lackadaisical, flippant understanding of theology. We'll see that later, too. 
maybe it's because you're used to, to being on yeah. the outside sometimes. But but uh, yeah, it's been so fascinating because um, even my family members, when we first started this relationship with VidAngel, part of it was, well, be, be careful because of the common misconceptions about about uh, our different belief systems. Uh, again, he's covering over some very important things. His family was had misgivings when he said, well, you know, I'm partnering with this uh, company, this video distribution company, Ange, VidAngel, uh, and it's run by Mormons. And his family had some misgivings. Well, wait a minute, what's... But he explains it this way. He says, well, they had misgivings about the common misunderstandings we have about Mormonism. No, 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 no. That is not the issue about the misunderstandings of Mormonism by evangelicals. You know, I'm sure that we do, as evangelicals, have a few misunderstandings about all of this convoluted theology that Joseph Smith and Brigham Young brought into the world through Mormonism. But it's not the things we don't understand or the misinterpretations or misunderstandings that is the problem. It is what they teach clearly. So the things that we are not mistaken on, these are the reasons why people have concerns about some evangelical Christian partnering up with the false religion of Mormonism. The, not, the, not the misunderstandings, but the understandings of the damnable heresies that the Mormons bring out. So, again, he's making light of very serious things in truth, Christian doctrine. But also just protecting the show. Like, Yeah, I, th- I think there's some uh, validity to that because you know, you're making shows specifically about Jesus and there are vast differences between between the Jesus of the Bible or whatever Dallas Jenkins faith he holds to. <laughs> We're going to see after that. That's going to be questionable and versus more versus Mormonism. Um, we're going to dive deeper into those things uh, here in a second. Will the audience be bothered by the fact that there are um, LDS people involved? Personally, I didn't really care because I've, I've worked with people of all different traditions or, I mean, I've worked with atheists. I've partnered with, with people who've distributed my movies who had zero desire to, you know, or connection to, to Christ and couldn't have cared less about it. So even if I had... Okay, and actually, ironically, that is not as much of a threat as some false uh, cult because, for example, the atheists, the skeptics, the... Uh, agnostic, they're not going to try to distort or twist the Jesus that we know and love from the Bible uh, because they could care less about Jesus. They don't believe in him. But when you have a non-Christian cult like Mormonism or Jehovah's Witness or Christian Science or a, a number of handful of false religions, they have a dog in this fight, so to speak. They have an axe to grind. They want to distort the real true Jesus and twist him into their image. And that's why there is a greater conflict of interest, possibly, between Mormonism partnering with Mormons and using atheistic or agnostic cameramen or crew members. There is the uh, pull to try to distort Jesus on the cult side, whereas the agnostic or atheist might not even have that uh, burden. Well, maybe that is, maybe that's problematic as well. And so uh, I guess there's already compromise uh, with that, but let's keep going. Significant disagreements with the LDS community, which I've learned I have fewer than I thought I did. But even with that, I was okay. I was comfortable with it. Like what? You know, you, you say there's significant differences in theology. Okay, name some, okay? Don't just keep it general. And then he says, well, I don't have as many conflicts as I thought. Okay, well, give us examples. Again, this vague, this nebulous, kind of loose, sloppy theology is just really, it's filler. It's not content. Because as long as they're treating the show properly, that's all that matters. Uh, which I think that's a lot to say. As long as they're treating your show properly. Um, I guess everything outside of that, I mean, who, if, who really cares if they really believe the Bible is the... Uh, infallible word of God alone, right? Because that gets into their view of Mormonism and the Book of Mormon. Uh, but he's very much concerned about his show. <laughs> he makes that very clear. As long as they're treating my show, uh, the God of the Bible, I mean, uh, yeah, they can tamper with that, but 
leave my show how it is. Very interesting. So it's been, I, I can honestly say it's been one of the top three most fascinating and beautiful things about this project has been my growing brother and sisterhood with people of the LDS community that I never would have known otherwise and learning so That is a problem. When you start using the terms, you're growing brotherhood and sisterhood with Mormons. We use those words, brothers and sisters, in the Christian t context to signify a spiritual bond, a spiritual brotherhood, a spiritual sisterhood. This is very, very, very important. And what he's doing now is he is confusing or confounding this line of distinction between calling a brother and sister in the Lord something and then referring to members of a false religious cult with a different gospel message, brothers and sisters also. So this, again, this sloppy theology, this careless theology, this more emotional, touchy-feely theology, uh, and we'll get into this later when he talks about they're his friends and he'll stick up for his friends. Again, he's confusing clear thinking with these emotions that he has with working with people, I guess, on his project. And he's he's confusing the two. There needs to be a clear and clarity here rather than this confusion that comes from his thinking. And uh, so right there, he, he uh, explicitly calls uh, Mormons... Uh, his brothers and sisters in Christ. It, here's why I want to uh, get into that. Even though, I, I, that's why I'm curious. How much uh, does Dallas Jenkins know about Mormonism? Does he know that um, Joseph Smith claimed that God was not always God? Yes, he said that. In the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, Joseph Smith said, we have imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that you may see. These are incomprehensible ideas to some, but they are simple. A, and notice what Joseph Smith says. It's the first principle of the gospel to know for a certainty the character of God and to know that we may converse with him as one man converses with another and that he was once a man like us. Yea, that God the Father as of us all dwelt on earth the same as Jesus Christ himself did. And I was sure from the Bible. And his point is that the Father was once God, um, just like we are. Um, flesh, and flesh, and flesh and body, right, uh, is the claim. And that's what their view of exaltation is, that, you know, you'll become a God. Matter of fact, that's one of their doctrines. They are polytheistic. That there are many gods, um, you know, they, yes, God was once a man. There's many gods um, and things like that. And so would, what, so given that that's their view of God, Dallas Jenkins, I'm curious to know if he knows that, if, if he's familiar with their do uh, doctrine of God, do you still consider them brothers, even though they deny uh, essential uh, orthodox understanding of God? So let's keep going. About um... Right. I mean, these are very, very important theological and spiritual questions. And he just passes right over these. He doesn't address them in any detail. He just kind of covers it over. He just wants you to just don't look over there. And it's just really, really disturbing to see how careless and loose and flippant he is with theology. This is not what you would want to have with someone who is an influence in the Christian world. You want to have clarity. You want to have specificity. You want to be able to distinguish truth from error and good from bad, and you want to make the, especially in the times we live in, we live in a relativistic, uh, loosey-goosey, feelings-based, everybody has an opinion, there's no standard of truth, there's no uh, test for truth, and as Christians, we have the Word of God, so we don't have to like swim in this sea of relativism. And Dallas Jenkins is really playing around in that relativistic stew that he's cooking up. About your, your faith tradition um, and realizing, gosh, for all the stuff... Faith tradition. Again, you don't put Mormons in the same category as, say, the Presbyterian faith tradition or the Lutheran faith tradition or the Methodist trace tradition. You don't say, well, then there's the Mormon faith tradition. This is relativizing the difference between true Christianity, uh, biblical Christianity that has differences. Yeah, there are different denominational differences, different branches of Christianity, uh, but you're bringing in now a false cult religion and saying, well, that's part of that whole different faith tradition, just like the Presbyterians and the Baptists and the Lutheran. No, you're confusing things. This is what I, I've noticed with Dallas Jenkins. He's a confused person who 
seems to care all about his project that he's doing, which I commend him for starting this project, the Jesus uh, movie, The Chosen, and that. But you've got to be clear about what the truth is and not blend everything together. Stuff that maybe we don't see eye to eye on, that all happened. That's all. Maybe we don't see eye to eye on, again, minimizing truth distinctions. All based on stuff that happened after Jesus was here. Um, the stories of Jesus we do agree on. Uh, okay, that's a problem. Again, he's making a bad theological distinction. He's saying, well, you know, what we're talking about in the Gospels and depicting in these TV shows, that's all in the Gospels, and all the things that are reflecting upon what Jesus did and what it means, that comes afterwards. But see, you can't do that as a Christian. We have to take the New Testament as it is given to us by God as revelation, and you can't say, well, here's Jesus of the Gospels. I don't want to get into what Paul said about it. I don't want to get into what the disciples preached about it. I just want to lay out the life of Jesus, because that came before, and then all this reflection about what that means and what the significance is, that comes later. No, you can't do that, Alice Jenkins. You're, you're dividing the Bible, the New Testament, into what Jesus did and said, and then uh, trying to say, well, the Mormonism and its interpretation of Jesus comes after what Jesus did, and so does evangelicals come, their Protestant interpretation comes after what Jesus did, actually, and all of the branches of Christianity, their division comes from the reflection on what Jesus did. We're just going to the, the very basics of what Jesus did and leaving it at that. Well, that's not Christianity, and you as a Christian should know, you can't say, well, I'm going to just focus on Jesus and forget about Paul or his, all the theology that's in the New Testament. I, You can't do that. We have to receive everything. Jesus trained his disciples to understand what the meaning of the cross was. And so by doing it the way he's doing it, he's he's really confusing theology. Um, no, no, we, we don't even agree on that, um, <laughs> you know, because they believe that Satan and Jesus were once brothers. And so th there are fundamental differences, even scripturally speaking um so no we don't we don't agree on just the story of the stories of jesus or and then we have to ask what do those stories mean and so we're not just reduced to historical data about a man who just lived two thousand years ago and what about who he is his nature see those are more fundamental questions not just what happened and we we love the same jesus um that's and we love the same jesus <laughs> um you mean the jesus that's uh you know was once a man who did not exist eternally that jesus the, the jesus who is uh, brothers with satan uh a jesus that was created that jesus yeah, so this uh, K-Dub True is actually really getting into the heart of the problem here. Uh, he's talking about, well, we're just going to take the gospel depiction of Jesus, and we're going to say we love that Jesus, and the Mormons, uh, my Mormon friends, and evangelical like myself, we all believe in that same Jesus. We love the same Jesus. Well, wait, stop. Mormonism teaches that Jesus actually... Uh, was the product of conception between sexual relations of a physical God, the Father, and he was the product of the physical God, the Father, came to earth and had sexual relations with the Virgin Mary, and they produced Jesus. Okay, you mean you love the same Jesus who is the product of an actual physical sexual relationship between God the Father and the Virgin Mary? No, that's not the same Jesus. That is a different Jesus, and it gets worse as you go along. So um, this whole idea that, you know, we love the same Jesus, no, you're talking about a different description and depiction of Jesus in Mormonism than you are in Bible-believing Christianity. Oh, the God of the Bible, <laughs> Jesus of the Bible. We're quite different, you know. So those are the things that have to be asked. Something that you often hear sometimes, it's like, oh, you, uh, they That's believe in a different Jesus than we do. Statement. Yeah. No, it's the same. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll sink or swim on that statement. And, I, and it's kind of He'll sink or swim. Well, hope you got your floaties because... <laughs> you <go. laughs> okay, this is a humorous moment. So this podcast, uh, Christian, <laughs> says <laughs> you'll sink or swim on the... Un understanding that you love the same Jesus as the Mormons, he, his, his response is, I hope you got your floaties. In other words, you're, you're sinking. 
you're not going to be swimming because uh, there, there's a problem. <laughs> and that's funny. That is a great line. I mean, that's called street theology right there. And he comes through with uh, 100% on that one. Um, Dallas Jenkins says, uh, I'll sink or swim on this statement. We love the same Jesus. Okay, he's going out on the limb and saying, I will die on this hill to say, I will not be corrected. I will not uh, change my views. I will not repent. I will not reconsider. I will not listen to my brothers and sisters in Christ that are telling me that I'm, I'm talking in uh, too loose and casual concepts, and I'm in error, actually. He says, no, I've dug in my heels, I stuck to my guns, and I will die on this hill. And he says, I'll sink or swim. And this brother <laughs> podcast uh, theologian is saying, well, you better get your floaties on. I guess you better get your flotation device because you're going to be there for a long time because you're not swimming. Uh, you're going to be sinking. A sink with that statement, biblically speaking. As a matter of fact, you, I don't know if floaties are going to help because it's a you have a boulder tied around you because that statement is there's there's no way to contrast the, the view of Jesus from the Christian perspective and the Mormon perspective. They're, they're quite they're quite vast. And I um, I don't mind getting criticized at all for the show and i don't mind being called a blasphemer i don't like it when my friends you should you don't mind being called a blasphemer from godly christians who are concerned about your understanding is an error you don't care about that that is arrogant that is just plain vain arrogance you should always be open to correction and you should always be willing to dialogue and discuss when Godly Christians, and it's not just one or two, it's very, very many, many Christians are saying, look, brother, you are in error on this point. You are acting like Mormonism is just some casual little deviation, like maybe a Baptist difference from a Presbyterian or a Lutheran from an Episcopalian. You're acting like it's a trifle, but it's not. It's a major, major problem, and you're making light of it. So yeah, you better uh, worry about being called a blasphemer because um, it will eventually, pride cometh before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. You are going down in some form or fashion because of that arrogance unless you repent. And um, I made it very clear that um, if, I go down, if I go down, I'm going down swinging, protecting my friends and my, my brothers and sisters. And so, Okay, so here's another problem. He's acting like a child, uh, maybe like a third or fourth grader, and saying, well, you know, my friends, I have friends in the Mormon church, and, and you don't talk that way to my friends, and you're hurting my friends, and so I'm going to defend my friends. Why don't you defend the truth? Why don't you defend the Bible? Why don't you defend the Christian revelation that God gave us and stop worrying about being so uh, loyal to your non-Christian false cult friend Mormons? I mean, if you love them, you want to correct them, right? So stop clinging to their errors and defending their errors and begin to act like a Christian would act here. I don't deny we have a lot of theological differences, but we, we love the same Jesus. And we love the same Jesus. What, what about the Jesus or the God of Mormonism, which says in Moroni 10.32? I, I want you guys to listen to this. Because even the way of salvation is quite different from the, the Christian view than the Mormon view. Check this out. Moroni 10.32 says, Yea, come into Christ and be perfected in him, and deny yourself of all ungodliness. And if you shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness and love God with all your heart, mind, uh, might, strength, then his grace is sufficient for you, that by grace you may be perfected in Christ. And if by the grace of God ye are perfect in Christ, you can in no wise deny the power of God. What is this verse teaching? This verse is pretty much saying you do all the work and whatever you fail at, grace will pick up and save the rest. It says, right, deny ungodliness, uh, deny yourself, love God with all your heart, mind, strength. Then grace is sufficient. Notice in, in Mormonism, grace comes after what you do. But in Christianity, Ephesians 2, 8, grace saves you, right? It's by grace you are saved apart from your works. That's what Ephesians 2, 8 gets at. Another verse, 2 Nephi 25, 23, it says, for we labor diligently to write, to persuade to our children and also our brethren to believe in Christ and be reconciled to God. For we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do. <laughs> so you do what you can and then God, God's grace will come in and, you know, give you the additional points that you need to uh, acquire salvation. And so Dallas Jenkins, totally wrong on this issue. Totally wrong. Uh, he said he'll sink or swim on this issue. He'll go down fighting. Well, this is a losing battle he's in because just right there, I demonstrated even on the nature of salvation, Mormonism is out, <laughs> out in the deep end, um, in, in dangerous territory, biblically speaking. And so um, my hope is that you know, so maybe somehow he'll hear this and reconsider that statement. But uh, from what I remember, I think he has uh, Mormons uh, kind of funding some of the project. And so I understand how that can be a bit of a, um, you know, it can be tough when you're dealing with those kind of situations. They're helping bring forth the show. And so hopefully this was helpful. You maybe you never even thought about Mormonism. Maybe you didn't know what you heard here today. So 
understand that Mormonism does not teach what the Bible teaches. And so thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Like this. Okay, so excellent, excellent commentary on uh, Dallas Jenkins. And Dallas Jenkins needs to stop digging in his heels. He needs to stop uh, holding his opinion as if it's something to die for. And he needs to open up his mind and say, you know, why is it that so many of my brothers and sisters in the evangelical Christian world, why is it that they have a problem with me saying that I consider my Mormon friends brothers and sisters in Christ and that we uh, both love the same Jesus? Why do they have a problem with that? Maybe, just maybe, I need to look further into Mormon theology and find out what they really teach about Jesus and why that would upset evangelical Christians. Now, you would hope that by this point in Dallas Jenkins' life, that he would be sufficiently discipled and educated and informed enough to know already that what the Mormons teach and what their gospel of salvation is, is erroneous. You would already hope that. But evidently, because of his close uh, working with Mormons in these film projects and on the chosen TV set and through the distribution of the video around the world and so on and so forth, through his collaboration with Mormons, he has, it looks like, let down his guard and he's allowed relationships and friendships and camaraderie get in the way of his clear thinking about these issues. And that has caused him to take a more open-ended, and I would say relativistic, approach to false teachings. He does not consider false doctrine, false teachings, false prophets, uh, false gospel. He doesn't consider these things a threat in respect to the Mormon church which is very, very disturbing, because here is a person who is representing evangelical Christianity, uh, because otherwise you wouldn't get Christian support funding his movie and support watching it and encouraging others and word of mouth uh, marketing to other Christians to watch it. Uh, he's assuming that his evangelical Christian world, and his father is a, a huge, heavy uh, heavyweight in the evangelical world. He's the author of the Left Behind series with Tim LaHaye. So, well known. You would think that he would have more respect for his brothers and sisters in Christ, real brothers and sisters in Christ, and listen to them closely and say, well, you know, maybe maybe I was a bit too naive or I was just looking at Mormonism too simplistic. I have to take a more mature and adult look at Mormonism and not encourage that, because if you encourage people or make light of the differences between real Christianity and Mormonism, you are leading people astray. It says, let, let not many of you be teachers. We might also expand that verse to basically say, let not many of you be influencers, because he's teaching through his TV show, The Chosen. Uh, he wants to make sure he doesn't cause anyone to stumble. Jesus says, don't cause any of these little ones to stumble. You don't want to cause anyone to go off track or be led astray. And unfortunately, his understanding is leading people astray in this area. Well, I hope that's been a helpful commentary. We'll see you back in another episode. God bless.